Greetings, my friends. It's great to be with you again this morning. And I am happy to talk to you today about some, some of the ideas of being a good listener. In a future lesson, I'll talk in more detail, but I want to say some general principles that I think are important that you can use. And most of these are taken from the book, my book, The Miracle of Kindness, Changing the World One Act at a Time, which I hope you will consult because it's in detail there. But when we talk about listening, we're really talking about something which is really basic to being a caring person. It is hard to be a caring person if you can't listen to people. If you are, by nature, just a talker. Talking is important and wonderful and helpful and enjoyable, but uh, to be a caring person, we need to be able to put our own conversing skills on hold and hear what people have to say. But really what listening, good listening is about, it's about helping another person to talk. So that when you listen well, you say words that encourage the other one to keep sharing what's in their heart and what's in their mind. So if we can think of listening that way, that it's really wrapped up with responding to people. It is helping facilitate another person to talk. To be a caring person really means that we are able to take an interest in their story. And to be interested in people's stories is a real blessing because people are, people are so interesting. One of, the, one of the other main principles that we need to remember when we are trying to be a caring listener is that we pay attention to their feelings. We listen for their feelings more than for information. The information is important in some ways, but when people are hurting or if we want to pick up on the distresses or fears or worries in their life, we need to pay attention to their feelings, their emotions. I like to uh, say we listen to people and our third ear tunes into their feelings. Our other ears hear the facts, the information, but the third ear is always tuned in to their feelings. For example, if a person says to you, my grandma died today. She is giving you important information, but it's your third ear that hears sadness. She didn't say she was sad. She just told you that her grandma died. But your third ear hears sadness, grief. And so when you respond to that information, it usually is most satisfying to the person if you respond to the hurt, the sadness, the grief, with words like, oh, that's got to be hard for you, or oh, that's sad. Some way you communicate to them that you have tuned in and accept their feelings of sadness. When we tune into someone's feelings, we are more likely to connect with them as persons than if we just stay on the information level. The information is important, but we, we connect with people as pe persons. When we hear 
and respond and acknowledge their feelings. So that's one of the principles that uh, we will talk about in greater depth another time. But it, uh, it means that we value people's feelings and we accept people's feelings. We do not discourage their feelings. We do not try to talk them out of their feelings. Uh, we, we are appreciating them as feeling people and we believe that as they talk about their feelings, they feel better, that they share them with you. It lifts their hearts and lifts their spirits. Sometimes, of course, that means that when we tune into someone's feelings, like if you say to the woman who said, my grandma died today, and you say, oh, that is sad, she might tear up. Tears might come to her eyes. One of the listening principles that we need to know is that when a person shows tears, begins to cry, something good is happening, not something bad. And so we don't try to close it off or close it down or run away from it. We may reach out to them with a hug or we may say some more words that it show that we accept their tears. Sometimes we cry with them, because sometimes one person's tears make tears come to our eyes. And we need to be comfortable with that and to really uh, be thankful for tears rather than regard them as something unwanted. One of the principles of being a good listener that I'd like to uh, remind you of at this point is that um, we are not there to fix people. We're there to hear them, to share with them, to walk with them, both figuratively or literally, and to allow them to talk about their feelings. But we should not have in our mind the idea that I've got to now fix them if something is hurt or broken or in distress. Leave the fixing to God. God does heal people. God heals the brokenhearted and he heals people who are sad. But he expects us to be there for them. To reach out and touch them, literally. And to put our arms around them and to let them talk. One of the ways that uh, we sometimes help a person who is hurting is to name the issue that we think is going on in them. Now, I like to call this naming the elephant. It's a, it's a, a familiar expression in our society, and it really means that you talk about something that both of you know is there, and yet sometimes you're reluctant or fearful to talk about. Let me give you an example. I had a class with a group of people a couple of years ago, and one day Bill came in, and he had bruises and, and uh, injuries on his face. He really looked beat up. And I said to him, Bill, what happened to you? He said, well, I slipped on the rocks at Newport Beach and fell on my face. And I said to him, it looks like this happened several days ago because it was already starting to heal up. He said, yes, yeah, it happened a week ago. But he said, you know what? You're the first person who asked me what happened. I was astounded, and it really puzzled me because it was so obvious, and yet he'd been among people, and no one had asked him, Bill, what happened? Well, that's an example of naming the elephant. I don't know why people avoided it. Maybe they thought his wife had beat him up or something and didn't dare say it. But it was such a, an easy thing to say, and it needed to be said. 
So naming the elephant is one of the things that we need to be willing to do. One of the places that this is most often appreciated is with one, someone who has just lost a loved one through death or through divorce. And those people want to talk about the person who had died, has died. And yet most people avoid the subject. So you meet Anne and you know her husband died recently and it's easy to get into just little superficial chatter about the weather or sports or clothing or something. And yet both of you are thinking of the fact that her husband died a short time ago. That's a perfect time to show caring by bringing up her loss. Just a, just a simple question. How has it been since your husband died? Or a little statement. You know, we all miss Bill since he left us to go to Jesus. You bring it up, you introduce the subject, and Inevitably, they overflow with conversation because they've been waiting for someone to bring up the subject that is biggest in their heart and that they need to share. And it's such a healing thing. So take those little risks. It doesn't always work, but most of the time, God's people are ready, willing, and able to open up if we just ask how you doing and name name the elephant okay thank you for listening and i hope your life will continue to be blessed and i'll talk to you again later thank you